Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, we put in the fundamental beginnings of a UI system. So we added in a bar for our health, we added in an icon for lives, and we added in score, high score, coins, and a wave counter. Now, as we progress through the tutorial, we're going to be updating that. We're going to be using certain functions that we haven't already used, but we'll get to those when we implement those features. In this video, what we're going to look at is creating the mobile input for uh, character controls. And this is going to be very simple because we already have a character controller functions. All we have to do is link those functions up to some buttons. So this shouldn't be a very long tutorial, so we'll just get straight into it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up our canvas and inside we'll create an empty game object to be our control buttons. And we'll put this towards the bottom half of our UI. Now inside this we can add a button and we aren't going to need the text element inside because what we're going to do, we're going to use a sprite for our button's image. So we'll just go ahead and click our button. We'll resize this to about 75 by 75, maybe a bit bigger actually. 100 by 100, that'll do. And we'll rename this to left arrow button. So if we take a look at our icons sprite sheet we should see inside we have a left arrow so if we just drag and drop this over into our source image on our button we see that now we have a left facing arrow perfect so we'll move this over to the left hand side and we'll just copy this button move it over so we have a, a bit of a space and then for the second one we should have a right facing arrow and we do we'll make sure we rename this button in our hierarchy and then we're going to need one more button so we can copy that and this one will be to shoot so we're going to put this all the way over on the right hand side of our UI and this time we should have an up arrow so we'll throw the up arrow in and just like that we have our controller buttons now I do have a feeling these are going to be a little bit too small for mobile controls. So what we can go ahead and do, we can select our player's ship and the shields. We'll move these up slightly. We'll also select the alien parent and we'll move this upwards as well. Just so we have that little bit more space. And then we can go ahead and change all three of these buttons to 150 by 150. Now we will need to reorganize these a little bit now. So we pull this over slightly and then both of them together and back up a little bit. Check our Y value and then put in that Y value for our up button as well. Perfect. Now one thing we need to understand when we're using buttons in our games is by default we only have access to the standard on click event and that fires whatever method is linked to it once whenever that button is pressed but we don't want that kind of functionality we want to be able to hold our ui buttons well we want to be able to hold our directional buttons so how can we do this well what we can do we can create a custom event trigger so if we select both our left and right arrow button and add the component and we put in an event trigger. Now then we'll have to select one of our buttons so we'll do our left first and right here we can see we have an event trigger script with a button that allows us to add a new type. So what we want to do, we want to go in and we want to add on pointer down and we also want pointer up and we'll do that for our right facing button as well pointer down and pointer up and what these two triggers do is this one will fire the second you press the button down and this one will fire the second you release the button so what we can do in our script we can set a boolean value 
to whether or not we are actually meant to be moving. If we are, we'll perform our moving functions, and if we release the button, we'll set that boolean to false, which will stop the movement. So if we go and open up our player script, we can add in two more private booleans. And these are going to be private bool move left and private bool move right. Now both of these are going to be false by default, which is perfect. And then inside of our update, outside of our Unity Editor platform dependent compilation block, we can add in if move left is true and transform.position.x is greater than our max left. As you remember, our max left is the screen position on the left hand side that we don't want the player to be able to go past and same for max right. So if we are if we're trying to move and we're able to move, we'll just do our transform.translate move left the exact same as we did before and then similarly we can copy that but this time if we're meant to be moving right and we are this time less than our max right we'll move to the right again exactly the same way as we're doing with our controls but now we need a few methods just to link up to our buttons. So we can come down and we'll put them just after our core routines. These are going to be very simple. All they're going to be uh, public void left button down, public void right button down, and one final one, public void direction released. So the way we're going to hook these up is on our on pointer down method for our left button we're going to call left button down. For our on pointer down for our right button we'll call on button uh, we'll call right button down and whenever we release one of the buttons we'll call direction released. So all we need to do in this is set move left to true move right to true in our right button and in our release we'll set both of our move left and move right booleans to false. So now we should be able to hold down the button move left will be true while ever we're holding it and if that's true we'll move to the left and we'll move to the right. So let's go and hook these up in the inspector. So we'll start with the left arrow, we'll scroll down and we'll add some events to our pointer down and pointer up. So the functions that we're trying to access are going to be in our player ship because that's what's got our player script on there. So we can drag in player ship into the object that we're referencing, select function player and then we can find our left button down and then the exact same player and direction released for our pointer up and we do the exact same again for our right hand button drag in our player ships player where are we there we go right button down and direction release so this is one of the reasons in the previous video where I said that we don't actually want to destroy the player's ship because if we were to destroy this we'd then lose our reference inside the directional buttons and we don't want to do that. We, if we did we could always just try and relink these via script but I find this is just a simpler way. So we can go ahead and test this already we should be able to hold these down in the inspector or in the editor rather and we can. Oh I do move this by script though don't I? I'm gonna to have to uh, amend that but we can see that moving left and moving right work perfectly fine and this simulates mobile input. So we'll quickly go ahead and just uh, get the position for this. We'll set this to minus four just to make it an even number and then in our player script our start position is minus four instead of minus 4.5. 
we play this, our ship shouldn't move. And it doesn't. It's where it needs to be. Perfect. So what about shooting? Well, our shooting function is actually going to be extremely simple. If we jump down to where our buttons methods currently are, we can add one more for our fire button called public void shoot button. And inside here, we're going to do exactly the same as what we do up here. We can copy our actual two lines of shooting code and paste them in, but this time we don't want to check for space. So now if we're not already shooting, so if uh, our shooting core routine isn't currently running, we will start the shooting core routine. And it should be as simple as that. So we should be able to again play the game right now. I'll move out into a bit of open space. And it's not working. It's not working because I haven't connected the fire button. Bruh. I'm a genius. Okay, so we need to select our fire button, add the on-click event, drag in our player ship like we did before, player, and link the shoot button. Now it'll work. Move over, try and shoot, and we can. Everything's working perfectly, and we can spam. I don't know if you can hear the clicking, but we can spam the button, and we're locked in by our actual fire rate. And that is all we need to do for our mobile input. That should be completed now. All the other mobile input, like the menus, are going to be exactly the same. We're going to create methods inside of scripts. This time we're going to create our own menu controller scripts. But the principle still applies. So we'll cover those in the menu section of this tutorial. For now though, I think we're done with the mobile input. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. And this will transcribe over to a touchscreen mobile phone perfectly. So in the next video, what we're going to cover is wave control. Now, what I mean by this is when we kill every one of our aliens, we'll give the player a large amount of score, we'll increment the wave, and we'll bring in another block of enemies for you to kill. So basically, this is going to turn into sort of an infinite runner style game, wherein you'll just keep getting wave after wave, you try and get as far as you can, and then the game will finally end when your player dies. So make sure you join me on the next episode of this tutorial series, and I'll see you over there.